very long. We have a gauge just above Hamus Pueblo, and that gauge is what triggers the rotation state. Whenever the uh, cubic feet per second of flow water in is accessible in the internet, we just call the hands. Oh my God! It's and what's the rotation? Yeah, you can uh, you can tell when to. <laughs> Come and look. Uh -huh. There better not be any water going. No, yeah, Gilbert is not. <laughs> That's funny. Monday mornings. <laughs> Monday morning. Right? <laughs> when they see the water cup. And by Tuesday afternoon, everybody's mm -hmm. I pulled it out and I was going to go take it and throw it in the barn so we could keep the nieces down. You were going to take it? I wouldn't hear of it. It says, no, our grandkids are playing around here. I don't want uh. that. I'll snake it in. <laughs> that way. This particular Tua Seca is going to have a priority date of 1865. The uh, Aseca that we're going to look at. Mm -hmm. There it goes down the, down back to the river and into Hopefully my neighbors down below so that they won't get mad at us. They they suffer a little bit more than we do. Now see it coming back now that I've see. Yeah. I like that because I don't have to make sure that this thing is airtight, you know, and it it, it fits the requirement of shutting off the gate. There to store it for when I've got to use it to divert water into the ditch. That's fox. Oh, my fawn. Yes, that's a little fawn. Oh, he's trying to climb up that. He's trying to climb up that. Yeah, I've seen his tracks here, but I've never seen the mama. And I don't really want to because mamas are mean when they protect their young. There he goes. He's still spotted. That's fantastic so, that you guys have that. Yeah, you know, everybody appreciates the water. They, they, they uh, and we, we take a lot of pride in, in the work and in the delivery of water. That that's what it does for us because it sustained our ancestors. It's still sustaining us. Mm -hmm. Asikas are very resilient. For me. <laughs> All right, that's looking good. All right, so uh, first of all, I just ignore the cameras just like we're talking and uh -huh. just uh, say and spell your name. You don't want to? Uh, my name is Carlos Dozier, D-O-Z-H-I-E-R. Carlos is spelled like it sounds. Carlos is spelled just like it sounds. This is your garden, Carlos, right? Yes. Tell us how it's doing this year. Well, it, uh, it started off real good. Uh, then about the time the, uh, the hot days came, uh, the creek got low and we had to start rotating. And if you rotate, then you only get a portion of the water that you normally do. How long have you been here? 
Uh, I've been here since the uh, end of 71. So we, we have a drought going on, as you've heard. Uh, for a few years now. And how, how is that affecting uh, things here? Well, my corn is usually uh, six foot, seven foot tall. Uh, my tomatoes are ripe by now. Uh, everything is shorter. Uh, not stunted, but uh, just not doing as well as it should. How has the, uh, the fire affected uh, your irrigation? Uh, other than the dirty water, I can't tell that, uh, that the fires had uh, that much effect on me. And, and uh, tell us a little bit, you've been here since 71, and you get your irrigation from the stachias, right? Yes. How does that work? Uh, it comes off higher elevation than we are up at the other end of town, and there's, uh, there's four ditches. Each parciante, each uh, landowner uh, with water rights is entitled to so many acre feet of water a year. Uh, we all share. Uh, the landowners with more property uh, are allotted more water. Uh, it hasn't been a problem uh, up until the rotation started, and we have to let it go for our friends downstream so that they can get their share of water too. So it's, it's a rotating thing. We all have to get along. Do you all get along? Pretty much. And, uh, you know, since we are in a drought, um, how, how is that uh, affecting people here and how you get along? Uh, it becomes more difficult when the water is less. Uh, in fact, it can get real difficult. The water is, uh, is precious here in Hamas, Hamas Valley. How important is it? It's very important. Uh, there used to be a lot of farming here. Uh, I, I don't know that they all supported their self with that, but there used to be a lot more farming than there is, and it seems each year there's less and less water. Uh, I, I can't answer why, but uh, that's just the way it is. What do, you, uh, what do you hope for? Oh, I would hope for the snows like we used to get 30 years ago. And what was that like? Oh, we could get 150, 160 inches pretty easy. Did you get snow right here? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And, uh, and what, would, what would that mean for you if you got a good snow? Oh, we got a good snow here. That means we got a good snowpack up on top, and our runoff could last uh, a couple of weeks and high water clear through this month. When was the last time you had a good snow like that? I believe... Uh, I, yeah, somewhere back, uh, that was the last good year we had. Uh, it was uh, knee-deep here. And what about this winter? How is this it? winter? Uh, nothing. Uh, I, I plowed the parking lot at the post office twice, and that was about four inches. So, so what would you hope for this winter? Oh, I'd like to see it like it used to be. The cold don't bother me. All right, Carlos, anything else you'd like to add? Or? Uh, no, I don't think so. Just uh, pray for rain. You plan on sticking around here for a while? Uh, I fell in love with this place. Don't ever plan on leaving. All right, thanks a lot. That yes, you're welcome. Can you sort of show Byron your different crops here? And well, uh, my onions, first on the other side, uh, those are winter squash over there. They seem to be doing real good. This was my spring peas, snow peas. They, as soon as the heat comes, they burn up. They, uh, and they the smaller ones right here. The brown ones. Oh, the brown. Oh, wow. Yeah, we'll just turn those under, uh, okay. and we'll plant again at the end of this month did for you the get fall. Some peas off of them. Or? Oh yeah. Did, did, yeah. Okay. But snow peas. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, they don't like the heat. They like the cool. So we usually get them in the ground in uh, the end of May. What is this uh, vine right here? That's that bindweed. That's what Gilbert was talking okay. about. That stuff just gets a little water and it chokes everything out. When does the growing season typically end here? You, when do you guys say, okay, it's over, it's too cold? Or the the, or the uh, cucumbers and the squash. Mm -hmm. Squash are usually so big you got to hunt for the squash mm -hmm. by now. Uh, my melons are doing uh, blood meal and powdered milk. And to keep the deer away, I don't. Uh, I don't know that it works, but I'll try anything. Yeah, right. The best thing I found is the stuff that my grandma used. dogs to chase. Well, the deer they. Away. I keep the dogs on that side because we get the bear and we. Did you say your fam so your your wife's family lives in here? Yeah, my wife's family's been here for. Wow. How old is this structure? Do you know? <laughs> I, I no, oh, I have no idea. Just... It had a dirt floor in it, and when Richard Ramsey would. Harry Delicia. Yes. And uh, they. 
they lived here. They raised Nella. Yeah. Their daughter. So. Well, Clyde died in the 70s. Uh, I don't know exactly when. Uh, right after I got here, early he 70s. Was already, so. w he was on up there. He was a, that's my granddaughter. Oh, is it? Okay. Somebody's looking out the window. Yeah, she. They bought him off. They paid. Yeah, him but they did. They kicked him out. One quarter million dollars to get rid of. Uh -huh. To get him away from the Valles Caldera. Get rid of who? The, the New Mexico, New Mexico timber. timber. Oh, they, they were. Had, they had exclusive rights to the timber. Yeah. But the land uh, had different owners. Uh -huh. And the Dunnigans, if they're like this. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The, all of this women, land belonged to the women. You yeah. know, that's why the names have, have changed. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a land grant, right? Same as my, my grandma. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And right. can, can you lose the hat one more time? Lose the hat. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. That's better. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. So, um, uh, Carlos, uh, first of all, you got here in the early 70s, right? I came back from Vietnam, got out of the Army, and, and uh, was traveling through and liked the place and just said, this is it, I'm staying. Why, why do you like it? Why do you, uh, why? I like the mountains. I like the people. The people were, it was a lot slower than any place, especially after just getting out of the military. I had a hard time adjusting. These people were uh, uh, a little more laid back, not quite as, uh, as uh, they weren't qu moving quite as fast mm -hmm. as the rest of the country. Uh, I don't get along with town very good, and uh, it suited me here. You've been on this property for quite a while now, and um, I guess um, your wife's family has been here for a while, and this this house has been here for a while. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about uh, the history. My wife's family goes back to the uh, the time of the land grant from uh, when the Spanish came here. Uh, her great grandmother, her great um, her dad's great grandmother, uh, came from either uh, Bland or somewhere over in there, and then moved into this valley because the water dried up over there. They had a drought. Moved over here. There was plenty of water, so they settled here. And that's uh, uh, three, four generations ago. But the women have all stayed, and the men just, yeah, <laughs> keep marrying into the family. <laughs> tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about, um, like, how, how, when you say a few generations, are we talking like? We're, 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 no, we're talking for the net. We're talking uh, Civil War type, uh, somewhere in there. This house has some history, right? Yeah, this house is uh, probably a hundred uh, and something years old. I don't think my uncle Clyde built it, but he moved into it shortly after it was built. Had a dirt floor until the '60s, sometime. I'm not quite sure. Uh, my uh, my father-in-law's mother's brother farmed all of this when uh, when the elderly people now were kids in the village. How have things changed since you've been here with the people? Have they changed? Uh, yes, the old timers, it's not quite the same with the people that have moved in from wherever they didn't like. They've moved in and tried to change it a little bit. Uh, the people that have been here a long time have tried to keep it the way it was, the way it was with the old folks. Uh, a little more, a little slower, not quite the fast pace as it is in Albuquerque. Uh, back to the soil, you know, back to the roots. How important is the land to the people here? It's very important. Uh, I could have bought land when I first came here for uh, $2,500 an acre, and now it's 60,000 on the river. It's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's in demand, and there's not any more of it. What would you what would you tell people uh, if if they were thinking about moving up here? Oh, don't come here. <laughs> it's it's too hot. The winters are too cold. It's too far from town. I could think of a not a lot of things. <laughs> okay, is that because you want you that, wanted to stay? There? Yes, because I wanted to stay like it is. It's uh, no, it's a nice place to live. It really is. Uh, you have kids yourself? Yes, I have four boys. My wife's got two kids. Uh, they all went to school here in the valley. They've uh, all moved on and done very well. They coming back, you think? I have one that lives here. He works in Los Alamos. I have one in Albuquerque, uh, one in California. Uh, they're all they all do well. They've all done well for themselves. Uh, they come and visit.
All right, Carlos, thank you very much. You're welcome. I think that was great. You got any mm -hmm. other tools? Uh, Are there snakes in there? No, no. No, we don't. In fact, I've only seen one snake this year. This looks like a uh, Richard Rasmus uh, concrete board, right? Well, he said he said he had four. Jeff was a senior for the first time. Okay. <laughs> you can get an idea of just how rugged the weather is in the Hemis Valley by just taking a look at this old house. That's how good the weather is here in the Hemis Valley, looking at this vacant house in Carlos's property. It's really stood the test of time, but it's taken a beating. And the weather here is constantly changing, but that isn't deterring Carlos's family. They plan on being here for generations to come. Something like that, okay? You're like, he's not going to get it. Yes, I am. One hit wonder. <clears throat> <clears throat> he can hear me, right? In three, two, one. You can get a good idea of just how rugged the weather here is in the Hemis Valley by looking at this old vacant house on Carlos's property. They've been here for generations, but no matter what Mother Nature has dealt them, they plan on staying here for generations to come, not even like that. In three, two, one. You can get an idea of just how rugged the weather is here in the Hemis Valley by looking at this old structure, this vacant house that has been on Carlos's property for over a generation. But the weather is, ah, fuck. But even, I got it, but even though, <clears throat> mm -hmm, let me just think one more time real quick at the end. So, two, one. You can get an idea of just how rugged the weather here is here. In three, two, one. You can really get a good idea of just how rugged the weather is here in the Hamas Valley just by looking at this old structure that's been on Carlos's property for generations. But no matter what Mother Nature has dealt them, they've stood the test of time. In three, two, one. You can really get a good idea of just how rugged the weather here is, is here. Damn it. And I keep. Okay. In three, two, one. You can get, you can, fuck. In three, two, one. You can really get a good idea of just how rugged the weather is here in the Hamas Valley by looking at this old structure that's been on Carlos's property for generations. But no matter what Mother Nature deals them, it is, they've stood the test of time. They have fought through it. I want that. In three, two, one. You can really get a good idea of just how rugged the weather is here in the Hemis Valley. This old house that is vacant now has been on Carlos's property for generations and it stood the test of time. But no matter what Mother Nature deals them, they have fought through it. In three, two, one. You can really get a good idea of just how rugged the weather here it is here. Why do I say here? God damn it. In three, two, one. One, you can really get a good idea of just how rugged the weather is here in the Hemis Valley. Check out this old structure that's been on Carlos's property for generations, but no matter what the weather deals them, God. in three, two, one, you can really, in three, two, one. You can really get a good idea of just how rugged the weather is here in the Hemis Valley by looking at this old structure. It's vacant now. It's been on Carlos's property for generations. But no matter what Mother Nature deals them, they have fought through it.
kind of those trees from there. Yeah. Hey, no highway. The old Percy Carey tree was there. Because that's the end of the year. You guys know that. Can I get some of their sound real quick? If you, you ignore the camera, just say and spell your name. My name is Gilbert Sandoval, G-I-L-B-E-R-T-S-A-N-D-O-V-A-L. And you are? I am the chairman of the Hames River Basin Coalition of Acequias, a regional uh, sub-compartment of the New Mexico Acequias Association. You're the head guy for the Acequias, right? For in the Hames Basin, yes. And what does that mean? That means a lot of responsibility. <laughs> You're the, what, what is the title again? The chairman of the coalition. And it's an umbrella organization uh, for all the non-tribal sequias in the Jemez Basin. You said the mayor domo, what is it? Uh, well, uh, I'm also a mayor domo. Mayor domo is a uh, kind of a water master in charge of uh, two sequias that deliver water to 14 users from the diversion down. Uh, we saw one of their compuertas or the head gate this morning. Uh, that serves one of the acequias. 
and uh, you saw that it was closed uh, because we're in rotation not right now on a priority call with the tribal water users, uh, Pueblo of Jemez and Pueblo of Zia. <laughs> and uh, the location that we're in here now is in San Isidro, and it is the, uh, the biggest agricultural uh, acequia in the Jemez Basin that irrigates the most acres. You see, uh, they irrigate about 506 acres, actually. Tell me a little bit and about acequias in general. What is an acequia? An acequia is a water channel that delivers water from a live stream in this case being the Jemez River, and it uh, through diversion uh, dams uh, on each of the acequias, which is there's 12 non-Indian acequias in the basin, and they each have their diversion dam, and then they have their head gate, which serves as a control of the flow of water into the fields for farm use. And then each one of the acequias has their own farm gates, such as the one behind me here. How long, have the, how long have acequias been around? The acequias uh, were probably established uh, in the Spanish return after the reconquest of uh, 1620. And then reconquest happened in the 1680s, 1690. And then, of course, the Queen of Spain encouraged the Spaniards to come in and settle the country in her name. And she gave land grants to them. And they, when they moved in, they replaced the, uh, the Native American irrigation systems that they had by impounding and, and holding water, replaced it with acequias. Uh, they engineered them to where they flow by gravity from the river, from the dam, to their fields. In history, it says that the Spanish, uh, when they established their land, the acequia was one of the first infrastructures that they built. Second, of course, their church and uh, leveled their lands, and they had to do this in order to sustain themselves. And from the Guadalupe Hidalgo Treaty of 1848, where this uh, was more formalized on rights, it, it has been the sustenance for the people since. So how long have... I was just going to do that. Okay. How long have acequias been in New Mexico? This particular acequia, uh, when the Surveyor General, of course, came in, prior to even becoming a state, has a priority right of 1760. So, but that does not actually reflect the actual construction time, the diversion dam, and this acequia is about eight to 10 miles long. Uh, so it took a lot of labor to construct it. So we're in a drought, a pretty bad drought. We look at this field and uh, this is not how it should look, right? Definitely not. I just uh, brought you here because it, it really illustrates the lack of water. In the rotation uh, schedule that we are now, this particular acequia in San Isidro gets the water once a week for 24 hours. This particular field that we're in probably would take 24 hours in itself to get irrigated, and it's only about 20 to 30 acres, uh, given the, the amount of acres that this acequia needs to serve, uh, 500. It so is that's a result not. of the drought, right? It, exactly, because the low flow on the river. The uh, tributaries up in the high mountains uh, didn't receive any snow all winter long. We haven't received, the monsoons have really not developed uh, like they should have, and therefore we're in you know, in a situation. The acequias do have a history of resilience because the people that cooperate in the repartamiento, which is a rotation type system, to share shortages. And we practice that right now. In this, this particular year, uh, it has proven a little hard to overcome. Even though the acequias have a long history of a democratic uh, governing system, and of management of water uh, by the repartamiento system or the rotation system and sharing. This year has proven a little bit of a challenge. I'm sure a lot of people are, uh, are it, it, there's some high tempers because of the, uh, the, everybody wants water and there's not enough to go around basically. Uh, fortunately, as, as a mayordomo, I, uh, the people are, are understanding. They know the history, they've, they've lived through droughts before. How is it, how is it, you had mentioned before um, that this particular field, uh, there's not as much cattle. Can you talk a little bit, like, directly, how is the drought impacted with less uh, foliage? Oh, oh, definitely. The, the uh, income, the economic impact to this community, the ranchers here probably have had to reduce their, their herds 
by 50 percent or some of them even more depending on the availability of their permits through uh, grazing permits through BLM or Forest Service that also have to cut down on the number of animals that they can permit and so the only alternative they had was to sell their herd uh, and the supplement feed uh, cost of hay right now is probably up to $225 per ton at Nappy or any of the other sources. So it's, it's a, a two-edged blade. They can't raise their own and it's too expensive to buy to supplement feed. So they're caught in a real bind economically. And a lot of these ranchers, this is their income. This is their sustenance. And uh, You've been here, you've been here for a while, obviously, and your family's been here for a while. Um, where do you think, what needs to be done with this Sakias now? I mean, you'd mentioned that, you know, they need, they're in need of repair, right? Right. The infrastructure repair is, is a factor, a very definite factor. When you have low water supply and then you get uh, uh, an Sakia that was uh, relined with concrete six, uh, 45 years ago, the 1966, the, the, the age has, and roots and uh, movement of earth has cracked the cement. So there's water losses in delivery. There's, there's difficulty in diverting the water from the river into the thing. So if we had had a good infrastructure uh, in perfect shape, it would have helped tremendously because the little bit of water that we do get in the day that we irrigate would be more effective in becoming uh, uh, for consumptive and beneficial use. However, it is lost in transit, and a lot of it evaporates. As you see, it's sunny here in the uh, open ditch. The concrete line ditches are subject to evaporation, and that is a depletion that we can't control. How is the ash and the fire affected? Uh... A lot of people are curious. We had never experienced this in the Hamas Basin. Never in my lifetime, I and mean, I've lived here my whole life, 75 years, have I experienced ash coming down the river. We have had fires of, of large magnitude, but none of them directly affected the watershed and the flow into the river, the live f river. So uh, it's still kind of a question as to how it, how it will impact. You're not sure. It, we're not sure uh, until uh, an analysis could be done, a laboratory analysis of the content of the ash in the water. A lot of people are irrigating anyway. Uh, as you saw up in the garden in Hame Springs and some of our acequias, the black line, in desperation, we will use the water because we don't know. It's a 50-50 chance. Is it detrimental to the crops or is it beneficial? It could be beneficial. If it is, it's some small panacea, <laughs> but not, but we'd rather Either irrigate. Way you need right. water. Mm -hmm. So if it happens to, to nourish the crops and have some nutritional value in this suit and the ash that is floating down, well, more power to to the rancher, but. I got about 30 seconds of uh, tape left if you want to. Okay, that's, I think that's good. That's yeah. good, yeah, that's good. We got everything. Thanks, okay. Gilbert. Two, one. Asakias have been the lifeblood of the Hamas River Basin community for a very long time. In fact, this particular Asakia has been here since 1760. Two, one. Asakias have been part of the Hamas River Basin community for a very long time. In fact, this particular Asakia has been here since 1760. It's water light, so, so Monday is the day that they're going to get some water here, right?